welcome, welcome, one and all, in here and out there to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. If... <laughs> if there are any fans of stupidity and corruption out there, you have joined us on the right night, because... <laughs> Today, we got the long-awaited House ethics report on New York congressman and slug under... <laughs> and slug under a rock you just turned over. <laughs> George Santos, the, the, the report dropped this morning and reveals that Santos sought to fraudulently exploit every aspect of his House candidacy for his own personal and financial profit and declares that he warrants public condemnation, is beneath the dignity of the office, and has brought severe discredit upon the House. That is not easy to do. <laughs> that, is, he, that, is, that is quite an accomplishment. That is a high chalk mark because... These days, the dignity of the house is slightly below a golden corral that just ran out of steak. <laughs> it's chaos. Now, you'd think, well, with findings this damning, George would be done for. But actually, the report made no recommendation about expulsion from Congress, explaining it would have required a much longer process. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe do that process. We'll... <laughs> We'll wait. It's kind of important. <laughs> There's like a surgeon saying, uh, Ms. Thompson, of course, we could remove your burst appendix, but that would take hours. <laughs> How would you uh, feel about some Motrin and a bite stick? <laughs> well, this report is loaded with horrible, inexcusable, totally juicy details. For instance, the things Santos spent donors' cash on include designer goods, lavish Atlantic City trips, and smaller purchases at OnlyFans. <laughs> oh. Oh. Smaller purchases at OnlyFans. So he was being prudent with his donors' money. Uh, excuse me, miss. I'm focused on fiscal responsibility. How about just a buck fifty for some elbow cleavage? <laughs> just zoom in to this area. Imagination will take it from there. <laughs> the report also identifies several occasions in which Santos used campaign funds for Botox. In response, Santos said, that accusation makes me very angry. <laughs> now sad. Now happy. Now scared. <laughs> the report also sheds light on the nonsense going on among Santos' staff. One staffer asked, what if we got a doctor's prescription for a segue for George to have accessibility reasons around the Capitol? He could zoom everywhere. <laughs> okay, that's fun. But what kind of doctor writes a prescription for a segue? <laughs> uh, the, uh, the tests have come back. I'm afraid you have dangerously low levels of annoying tourists. <laughs> also... Also, how's that appendix, Mrs. Johnson? <laughs> as late as yesterday, Santos claimed he wasn't worried about the committee's report. What is your level of concern, though? What is your level of concern? Look, I, I, I think I said this very clear to you. I will take whatever comes my way the way it comes. I have no concerns, and I don't have any premeditated uh, feelings on it. No premeditated feelings. <laughs> exactly what a sociopath wouldn't say. <laughs> Today, we bid farewell to Grandma, and let me just say to all of you, I have not had a chance to Google the correct emotional reaction, but rest assured, like all of you, I am... angry? It's hard to tell because of all the Botox. <laughs> but today, after the report dropped, Santos announced he will not be seeking re-election for a second time. I know. I'm, I'm so happy, too. Uh, thank God I won't have endless content for my show anymore. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be okay, because the Late Show can confirm that Santos has endorsed a new candidate for 2024, Katara Ravash. <laughs> so, uh, doing nothing, doing nothing so far about George Santos is part of the House GOP's broader plan to do nothing about anything. In fact, these folks are on track to be the least productive Congress since the Great Depression. I find it very hard to believe that there was a time more depressing than now. <laughs> Even Republicans are sick of the inaction, like Texas Representative and skinhead Santa, Chip Roy. <laughs> Yesterday, Roy went on the House floor and let his fellow GOP colleagues have it. 
one thing. I want my Republican colleagues to give me one thing, one, that I can go campaign on and say we did. One. Anybody sitting in the complex, if you want to come down to the floor and come explain to me one material, meaningful, significant thing the Republican majority has done. Ooh, ooh, uh. <laughs> repeatedly humiliate Kevin McCarthy, uh, elbow each other in the kidneys, uh, teach us about father-son porn sharing? Because that stuff meant something to me. <laughs> It was nice to see a Republican stand up and denounce the GOP for doing nothing until he told us what he wants them to do. We're too cowardly to stand up and do our job. Oh, no, a shutdown. Are you freaking kidding me? Oh, we can't have a shutdown heading into Thanksgiving. What will they say or do? How about we stand up and fight, paying for this stuff as we go so our kids and our grandkids don't inherit a bankrupted country and they don't have to wonder what freedom used to look like while they're speaking Mandarin. Wow. Wow. I don't know what a shutdown would do to Thanksgiving, but it's nice to have a preview of what your drunk uncle is going to be screaming at the cranberry sauce. <laughs> oh, my. Look! Look, comrade! That is your name? Ocean Spray? <laughs> oh! Oh, there's some big news today. Yesterday, two old men hung out. I'm talking about the meeting in San Francisco between President Joe Biden and Chinese <laughs> President Xi Jinping. The closed meeting was four hours long, and we don't know what words came out of their mouths, but we do know went into their mouths. A menu featuring tarragon roasted heritage chicken and charred broccolini and Brussels sprouts. They gave two old men broccolini and Brussels sprouts, <laughs> and then... Locked them in a room for four hours? Really? I assume. I assume they lifted the ban on chemical warfare. <laughs> Biden. <laughs> Joke's based on a true start. <laughs> Biden spoke with reporters after the meeting, and he had this to say. Would you say, Mr. President, that you trust President Xi? Look, do I trust you? I trust but verify, as that old saying goes. That's where I am. There it is. Joe Biden quoting Ronald Reagan with trust but verify. Of course, Trump also quoted trust but verify, but only at the McDonald's drive through <laughs> I'm not shifting this car to park until I count all 10 nuggets and get visual confirmation of my Happy Meal a mini Chewbacca. Mini, hello, Chewy. You put enough barbecue sauce on Mini Chewbacca, he's pretty good. <laughs> Can I just say, I, I so respect that balanced statesman-like response from Joe Biden, especially when he compared to the last guy who world leaders, and this is true, were able to distract by using an attractive female interpreter. Not that China didn't try the same strategy with Biden with their new translator, Sexy Acela Express. <laughs> mm. 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 See you. See you in the quiet car. <laughs> Perhaps the most thoughtful moment of the meeting was when President Biden wished Xi's wife a happy birthday, and Xi replied that he was embarrassed. He has been working so much that he'd forgotten that his wife's birthday was coming up. <laughs> Gee, you fool, you don't admit that. <laughs> you just say, of course my wife's birthday is coming up, and I've planned an amazing night. Siri, look up romantic restaurant, comma, China. <laughs> Ooh, Chinese restaurant. You may remember a few weeks ago, um, relations between the U.S. and China were so tense they took back almost all of the giant pandas they lent to our zoos. But this is true. This is great news. In a gesture of goodwill, President Xi signaled that China will send new pandas to the United States. Yeah. This is great. We're going to be getting new pandas. I'm so excited. Hey, uh, hey, Steve. Oh, uh, it's my writer, Brian Stack, everybody. Brian, um... Brian, is everything okay? I'm taping the show. Well, Steve, I heard you mention that China might be sending us pandas. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, they'll have to transport them somehow, presumably, and you know how there's that restaurant, Panda Express? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, I do. Well, there's gotta be a joke there somewhere. Okay, what, what would that joke be? Well, uh, not sure, but uh, we'll have the chuckleheads in the writer's room put their noodles together. Hey, you doing one of those monologues tonight? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm doing it right now, Brian. Oh, that's perfect. Monologue's a great place for jokes. <laughs> Tell you what, I'll be back in two gifs with a zinger that'll build you a great wall of laughter. My writer, Brian Stack, everybody. Brian Stack, there you go. We, um... It's hard to tell, but we got him from Conan. <laughs> there's also... There's also news about Speaker of the House Mike Johnson. Uh, back in October, before becoming Speaker, Johnson called American culture dark and depraved and said that America deserves God's wrath. Look. It's shocking, but I hate to say it, I think he's right about God being mad at America. I mean, why else would he give us Mike Johnson as speaker? Yeah. We got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Jonathan Carl and Maria Bamford. And when we come back, Space News.